Welcome along guys. I'm beginning my second hill part for my crawler addition to the slot card track. So what I've done was I built a baseboard, cut a baseboard for us of this fairly thin stuff. And then I glued a solid piece on all around. That's underneath there. That's glued down and screwed. And that stops this, which is fairly thin, from flexing. Keeps it keeps it from flexing, which eventually would crack the the hill, the plaster I use. So that's that's it. So of course it's going to lead from this one up to here, and not too big a hill, but anyway down here, up here, a bit higher up here, and ends here. The plan here is I'm going to glue a stick here because I want something to screw down because I'm going to be putting um, some sort of rope bridge here to the next part <clears throat> so you need something a little bit strong to to, to uh, screw the rope bridge onto so that's why I'm going to put that stick there and I'm letting it run out a bit over the edge because once I've moulded this with the plaster I can put a, also put a, some sort of a bridge going from here across to some other part of the track. The idea of this piece being lower is so that I can get from here, from here on the track, I can get up, up and across. Also leaves me the option, if I have this going across here, leaves me the option later of adding, <coughs> you know, some sort of a removable bridge here. Sort of an arch bridge, which will go from here to here. Which will I'll make so that it'll be removable. So that'll be able to come and go as I please. So that's that's the plan. So I'm just going to start gluing this down with PVA glue now. Gluing all this stuff down just lightly. And after that, I can start putting the plaster on. And this is the plaster I'm using. Uh, gypsum plaster. Gyps binding, that's what they call it. Plaster of Paris bandages. And that's what I can get in Latvia. So that does, that does the trick. So here we go. I'm gonna start gluing this down. And I'll come back to you when, I, when I'm out in the garage putting the, the bandage plaster onto it, because that's a bit of a messy job. So I chose to do this part out in the garage because it's rather messy. So here's the plaster. You guys have watched me before, have seen this before. This is your, your bandage plaster. So um I've never seen this before. Best to just skip past everything and get to the interesting bits. Oh. Is there interesting bits, we wonder? Maybe there's no interesting bits. Let's see. I'm not too bothered about how this part looks, because this part will be against the track. And don't forget, you can always come back, redo, put more bits on it, plaster over the plaster that's already there. It's not an end process, it could be the beginning of a process, you know. I always try and make... Don't make it too flat on the flat areas because you, you never see completely flat natural rock, you know. You see little pieces that might look a bit flat, but you, you don't generally see completely flat natural rock. So I don't want to, you know, if you lay it on a flat piece, don't leave it completely flat. Give it a bit of a, a wriggle.
try and get the plaster in. So you're not leaving too many holes around the place. What I'm doing is, I'm just brushing the plaster. It just goes into those holes. There's a lot of holes. And this just spreads the plaster around and sort of fills in those holes. So just use a brush for this, soft brush. And then you have less work to do when you're when you're using your gap filler plaster later on. Now if you if you're doing it, you don't like the look of it, you know, if it looks too in certain areas of it doesn't look interesting enough. Don't worry about it, you can add to it. You can add some stuff later. Not a problem. I'm gonna work from this end here so I can see what I'm doing here. That folded. If possible, try not to let it fold like that. Gives you a bit of a problem. See, when it folds, it's very awkward to get level straight again, to open up again. So it's a wee bit of a problem when it folds. So try not to let it fold. If at all possible. I know you can't see me at the moment. Let me just put this bit here because I'm going to work from the sides later. Now you can see, I'll just turn this around and show you. We're going to talk about the sides. Now you can see that goes out over the edge. I have that design so it makes the hill bigger but the base has to be small enough to fit on my slot hair track so I'm bringing swooping it out so later I have to turn this on its side because the plaster will just hang down here or won't sit very nicely so what I can do is later I'll put this on its side and I'll plaster in here that is the plan I have the hill on its side now so I can get these pieces here and then the, it'll sit down on top of that and dry. So that's the only way of getting underneath, underneath the hill. So I'm just going to do that now. And then when that's dry, I'll turn it around and I'll do the other side. Just to show you how it looks so far. I see you haven't done under there, so you can see the difference. See all the holes there from the plaster? And that's when I use some of this stuff. Very little left now. I water it down a little bit just to get some more out of it. Really you should turn it on the side for doing these bits. But I'm just quickly showing you how it how it covers all those all those holes. See those holes? I get a little bit of this stuff. Water it down. Just for this, because you're literally just brushing it on very gently. So you don't have to be too fussy. And you see that covers up that hole very quickly. Now this part will not really be seen. But maybe if you're doing some photographs, you know, you, you just want it to look as realistic as possible. Just to show you that we can all change things. Don't mind that. So... I wasn't happy with this, it was too easy. So I'm gonna add a little hump there, just as you come up. You know, as soon as I measured it up to the truck, that was too easy. That's a little bit harder, but still easy. But it's where you come down here, that makes it more interesting. So I'm gonna add this piece here, add a couple of pieces here. I'm adding a little bit here, just to make this just a little bit more interesting. So that, you can do that, you can go back. So that's what I'm gonna do, put a bit more plaster on this. And, Make it just a little bit harder. It's too easy at the moment. So here we are at this hill and a few added pieces here. Here, here, this little piece here, here. And a few other pieces just to make it a bit more interesting. So I'm just gonna paint it with the usual 50-50 gray mix. And then I'll let that dry. 
So a quick look at the hill. I'm just putting the last of the the grey onto it. So to paint this particular hill, okay, it took one jar. So that's about three spoonfuls of paint and three spoons of water. So that's the average amount you'll do when you're doing a, a wash for a hill this size. And don't forget, when you're just near finished, it, make sure you look at it from every angle. Because there will be places that you will miss. Don't just look at it from one side, paint it and say that's okay. Because, let me see if there's anywhere I missed or go around this side. Let's see. You see there's little, there's a few little spots there, in there, there, you know, down in there. There's a little spot I missed there. So go over a couple of times, have a look from all angles. So when you're finished, have a look at it from four angles and cover everything. Okay, let's go on. Next I'll be putting the, the brown marks on it just for weathering. I just put my black wash onto this, which again, is a, it's about a six to one mix. It's about one, one part paint and about six parts water. So it's quite a transparent mix. And then you just throw it on like that, you know, and then it, it, it just, it comes through. And the gray comes through and then you get a sort of a rock color. So. Let me just see, when it dries, it gives you this sort of rock color. And you see those browns coming through? Just where I've done accents for where there might be streams or something. And then you just gotta go around and make sure you haven't missed anywhere. Now that's coming through a little bit too much, that brown. So I'm just going to give it a bit more of a, a black wash around that area. Now listen, don't, you don't have to be. This is not for perfection. Don't be too worried about it. Very quickly going to get messed up a bit with crawlers running over it, you know. So it's different if you had a, like a model railway or like my slot car track where you won't have any cars on it and you want to get it looking really perfect you know but here very quickly slot uh rc cars crawler cars will tear up some of that and you'll find yourself having to repaint it a couple of times and add bits of plaster but that's okay so there we go that's that that's the mountain now let that dry then i'm going to dry brush it i'll show you dry brushing now next i'm going to dry brush it and i'm going to put some greens just little bits in certain places so I'll be giving it a white dry brush. And that should be it. With this particular part of my crawler track. So the dry brushing effect, some paint, latex paint. Uh, put a bit on the brush. Put it on some newspaper so it's not too too strong. And then, then just very gently brush. And you see it, it highlight it brings up it brings up the rocks, gives them a bit of highlight for the the weather or the sun or and you're just going around the whole lot. It is an area there. It's kind of hard to see, but I'll try and see if you can see the difference. You know, it, it sort of gives it that gives it that look. Adds a touch of realism to the whole thing, and it's very dry. Really, really very dry brush. Not wet at all. And just brush it very gently. Don't dig in. You're not painting. You're just highlighting. Now with the gluing. I'm just using PVA glue, your normal PVA glue. For example, of the hair now, there's nothing on the hair. So I'm just gonna put a bit of glue there. Okay. 
I'm done just get a piece of stuff. I can use this to push the glue under. The glue is a little bit. I didn't get the glue perfect, but the glue dries transparent, so you don't really notice the glue. You know, so just maybe open this stuff up a bit. Make it look as realistic as possible. Don't be afraid to add some more bits to it. Now I tend to put stuff where car wheels are not going to go over because the car wheel will very quickly rip this up from the track. There's another piece over here. Again, this piece. And try and get it in a way that there's the roots. Try and get it in a way that the root it looks like it's growing up from the root. You know, don't have a if there's a root piece on the on the scenery, try and do it in such a way that it looks like it's growing up from the root. There's a piece we have here now. I'm just gonna put that in there. Again, car tires are not going to go in there. Very rarely they'll go into that gap. So you can let that happily grow there. You know, and just Places where, if you put it somewhere like here, you know, when you glue it on, like guaranteed car tire, a crawler tire is going to rip that out very quickly. You might get away with putting a little bit here, possibly. You know, um, I might put a bit there. I'm using two different colours, simply because I just want to add a little bit of colour to it. And again, you can, you can give this stuff a wash with some dark green acrylic paint if you don't want it to be too too bright so that's it i'm going to put this on the track now and i'll just show you how it blends in with my track and that will be the end of the post here we are the finished product and it's mounted on top of my slot car track which comes down here that's the first hill I made. Here's the one I made that you looked at me making. As you can see, I increased a few little bits, like I put a piece here. Um, I put some pieces here and this piece. So that's it. So it makes it just a little bit more interesting. So this was too easy. So it just makes it just a little bit more interesting for the cars. I'll try and get the angle. That's the angle you're at. So it's still quite easy. Not too bad. Not too bad. Easier for the 118th, but um, this piece here, more interesting because you've got to get your, you can get stuck in here. You can get stuck in that corner there. So you gotta have your wits about you. Get up on this piece maybe. You know, we have a little bit of a, I'll show you here. A little bit of a piece here where you can get your wheel on. If you miss your, your wheel, you go down in here. And then, It'll climb up here, quite steep but doable, you know. And so what I've done is I've started designing the next hill, mountain, whatever you like it. Now there's an escape route here also, if a car can't make it up here, I can run a gauge where the car comes around the edge here instead. And this is this piece I told you about that's sticking out, you see? So this makes it possible for cars to come around this way instead of going over the main hill. And I have done the same here. I have a hill here which is quite steep, which is fairly steep at the top. I might have to put some uh, some grippy sand into the paint for this because this is this is seriously steep here. But I've also done a very tight little escape room here where the car can clinging to the edge it can go around the side this way okay and get back around to here so there is a possibility to climb around or to go this way depending on what way i feel like putting the gates on the day if i have friends or somebody else visiting we can make it more difficult for modified these are completely standard trucks now so that's the lie of the land with this one just this gives you enough just to get over here, just scrape a bit. It'll go down here without tipping, it'll be fairly okay. Of course it'll tip if you don't do it right, you know, but come down here. 
again you'd want to be coming down onto this possibly it'll be on the edge it makes it interesting so it's good to test the car while you're building the, the hill again there's the one tenth no problem for a one tent going through here but it can make the gates a bit closer and maybe have a turn immediately afterwards a gate here to bring you right up onto this corner you know you can come back down i can come down this way onto the track so that was my idea of leaving this this gap here you know that you have to come down this way and join this part of the track and go across and i'll have some other interesting stuff along here otherwise you can go straight up here and it's a nice angle nice steep angle up here easier for the 118 scale and from there um your bump is going to bottom out there so i'm not sure about that but if you go here you know if you go there you can possibly get up here reverse a bit get your wheels here and then again continue up this hill with this truck on top same thing bottoms out just a little bit just about and back down the other side and then i have a continuation which will have a turn here and i'll be building another hill around here which will continue going up to about so high so there you go guys that's what i'm up to and all these this is three modular parts one two and the first one there to bring you up and um, these can be all put away and hidden underneath the baseboard when i'm slot car racing so that's what i'm doing just thought i'd show you incorporate the hobby of slot car racing and crawling and it's, it's probably more suitable for the the little 124 scale the uh, axial type scale those smaller scales is probably more interesting for them because it makes it more of a challenge and uh, i'll be building a track outside and in my garage for the 118 scale trucks there's the difference there okay so all right guys well that's it i'd just like to say thank you very much for following me in that little build of the uh of, the, of this hill here and i didn't bother showing you the next hill i built because you've seen it you know you've seen what i'm doing and I need to get a bit more slot car content up and I have an unboxing to do of a crawler. So uh, bear with me on my way for a few weeks. Gallivanting in Ireland. So uh, when we get back, we'll, we'll get a few more posts up. So thank you guys for watching. Always appreciate subscribers. Always looking for subscribers, comments, likes, anything that helps the channel. And um the more subscribers we have, the more the channel will be pushed and the more you'll get to see. And then um, it keeps me trying to think of new and interesting things to post, which is always a, a thing when you, you get a poster's block. It's like writer's block. You're thinking, what can I do? You know, I have a couple of cars I haven't unboxed yet. There's uh, slot cars. They're sitting there. I get round to them. At the moment, I'm working in the garden. So I'm working in my garage. I'm working in my garden. I'm doing a bit here. I'm doing a bit of traveling so it's very hard to fit everything in but i'll try and keep one a week two a week on a good week and um, at least one every two weeks so i still have lots of ideas and lots of things to come to you in the future so greetings from latvia from myself harry thank you for watching